Okay. Today, we're going to talk about the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is incredibly powerful. Remember how we were talking about the normal distribution and how we can do exciting things with a variable if it just so happens that the variable is normally distributed? Like we can use this table, but only when the variable is normally distributed. But <clears throat> let's say instead of going out and measuring the height of a whole bunch of men, let's say everybody in the class goes out and finds 30 men and says, how tall are you? And you write down the height of each of those 30 men and you find the mean. And then you come back and you send me an email and you say, my sample mean was 69.3 inches. And somebody else finds a sample mean of 68.2 inches. And somebody else finds a sample mean of 70 inches. Maybe somebody else 67.9. Everybody gets a different sample mean because everybody asked different men. But when you start looking at a collection of samples, the distribution of sample means becomes normal. So not all variables are normal. People's income is not normally distributed. When I give a test, most of the time, the scores are not normally distributed. When you take multiple large samples from a population, the distribution of sample means is normal, even if the original population was not remotely normal. Weird? Yes, it is weird. But what this means is we can use the normal distribution table even on variables that aren't normal, like people's income. We can use the normal distribution on incomes as long as you're talking about samples of reasonably large size rather than individuals. So let's say you all go out and ask 30 men how tall they are. Everybody watching this video asks 30 men how tall they are. And then each of you sends me your sample mean. Post it in the comments. It'll be fun. So I find the mean of all of your sample means and the standard deviation of all of your sample means. What do you think is going to happen there? Will the standard the mean of all the sample means, what should that be? Yep, it's the true population mean. How about the standard deviation of the sample means? Will it be the same as that of the whole population, or bigger or smaller? It's going to get smaller. The population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, which is the sample size. So if you went and asked 25 men how tall they are, you would expect that the standard deviation of the sample means would be only a fifth as big. Why is that? Why does taking samples make the standard deviation smaller? Well, think about it this way. If one guy walking down the street is over six feet tall, that's not really all that unusual. But if you saw 20 guys walking down the street together and they were all over six feet tall, I would find that a little strange. So. 
So the bigger the sample, the smaller the standard deviation. So this is the complete version of the central limit theorem. So we can use the normal distribution table to model any population if we're talking about samples rather than individuals. This gives us a new Z formula. Instead of X, we have X bar. This is sample mean, population mean. Standard deviation, sample size. What's the difference between the sample mean and the population mean? For men's heights, the population mean would be the true mean height of all men living in a country. We don't, you're not going to find that. You know, you're not going to be able to measure every man in America. And it would take years, and by the time you were finished, some of them would be dead, and some more men would have grown up, and it wouldn't turn out well at all. But what you might be able to do is find a sample mean. 